for the house. Amen. We want to um we want to we want to take your attention to uh something very very specific and that is the prophetic intercessor, the gatekeeper, the watchman. God has a design and everything must be in order. And this is the time that you, the prophetic uh, intercessor, the woman, the men, uh, you know, that are sensitive, the prophetic intercessor, you know, that you would be on your position because you can see that things are out of order. Now, the first thing tonight that we want to check, oh, Shabbat, ah, because we're living in the last days. And you know that there's a whole lot of reprobates, uh-huh. There's a whole lot of stuff that's out of place. We want to be in line with the things of Jehovah. We want to be in line with the instructions of Almighty God. I want to uh, make sure that my mind is stayed on him, oh Shabbat. That I'm consecrated, dedicated, I'm devoted to the things of God. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, oh Shabbat. And so it's important. Pardon that this temple, oh Shabbat, this temple that doesn't belong to me, this temple that was created to house my God, oh dear, to house his presence, uh, he made us unique, uh, that I can worship and sing praises unto Almighty God, he made us unique, uh, that we could speak. <laughs> and so as we speak, so we be done. He, he made us unique. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. That faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If I have the faith of the mustard seed, I can move mountains. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. So he created me that I would be directed back to himself. Oh, Shabbat. But he lets me know that I can't dwell in no unclean temple, oh Shabbat, it's got to be clean and holy, oh Shabbat, and so we want to know tonight, you know there's some watchmen and there's some gatekeepers, there are some of you, uh, particularly, you know, you don't get that often with brothers. We're going to come up, but let me deal with some things here. You've got some women under your side, and I ain't talking about all women. I'm talking about some anointed women, and I know some, and I've had some in my life. Oh, Shabbat. Uh, one of my favorite ones that probably will never be replaced is went home to be with the Lord. But there are certain people that will call you up, oh, Shabbat, and they'll call you up to check on you, Amel Sata, because they're like gatekeepers and watchmen. You're in the, you're in the temple, oh, Shabbat, or in, 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 in the inner circle of Yehovah. And this would be one of those women that are the prophetic intercessors and she's watching over Yehovah's flock and you may get a call are you alright Zeri Shabbat keep your focus I'm praying for you I'm da -da 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 what's the Lord saying today that kind of stuff you understand what I'm saying so we want to be careful of understanding the temple and that everything is in place oh Shabbat that I'm, I'm, my worship is in place that my my studying the so my shelf is proved is in place. My interaction is in place. I'm the Lady Osaya. The the things that I'm doing in my home are in place. Uh, they connect and they're conclusive to the things of God. I often would tell my children, you know, well, you can't watch this. If they seen a TV show and the show said something uh, 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 swearing or anything like that, then we're talking about over 27 years ago. you right. No, my kids, I didn't have to be there. They turn the channel. You understand what I'm saying? And because I told them, I said, the TV belongs to God. Everything in this house belongs to God. And if we if we abuse it and we don't use it right, huh? God will take it right away from us. And so it wasn't putting fear in them, it was just recognizing that God was in control. Now that's not to say that I didn't have flaws and errors in my life that needed to be worked on. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking to you that you 
recognize the order of your house. First recognize the order in your personal temple and then recognize the order in your house where you dwell, that where you allow Jehovah to dwell with you because he's given us a, a, a house, a place to rest. And in that place, we carry Jehovah with us, huh? You don't go nowhere without carrying with him. I was telling the pastor uh, not long ago, a couple of days ago, I said, yeah, man, go ahead and get that car. You just got to remember whatever car you pick out, you're carrying Jehovah in. And it's just how you want to carry your God. Um, no, 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 Saya. Yeah, I prepared for my God with all my might, oh Shabbat, this temple that he may dwell in it, um, da, 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 Osaya, that he may be pleased with the arrangements, uh -huh, that everything's in place. And so we, 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 we look for those, those women, the prophetic intercessors, and, and you, the brothers, the gatekeepers and the watchmen, that you're watching out for the young men and the young women, that husband and that wife, that brother and that sister, that pastor, that apostle, and that bishop. We must get on our position, O Shabbat. Now, I'm talking outside of what you call the church or the temple. See, because the temple... If you really look at it, it would most of the times when you're all there on Sunday. Now this Sunday will be Mother's Day. So a lot of for Mother's Day, a lot of the men and a lot of the girls that don't go to church because they don't believe in church, but their mother's been in church for 30 or 40 years. Now I'm talking real talk, you know, but what happens is on Mother's Day, you run in there and you go and you you go to church with your mother. You get a I forget what it is, the orchids or something. One color means your mother's alive. The other color means your mother's passed on. Something like that. They got all these traditions to make money. And it's really just pagan holidays because, listen, I mean, let me tell you something. Every day is Mother's Day. Every day is Father's Day. Every day, you know, because, you know, you got to honor your father and your mother. That's it. That's the word of that's the word of Jehovah. That's just a principle. And so you don't need to have no day and you wear the pastel colors and the big hat and a flower on your chest and they and they make all the mothers stand up to recognize it's your day. Listen, I mean Every day is your day. And then you don't believe me? Talk to somebody that's barren. Talk to a man that's impotent. He can't have children. A woman can't have children. Let me tell you something. You better not go up into him, running up to him, talking about Mother's Day and Father's Day and all that stuff. Listen, I'm talking to some real people that just want to understand that Yehovah is talking about the prophetic intercession and the gatekeepers and the watchmen that order would come in the house. What is your walk like? What does your temple look like tonight? What does your temple look like tonight? When God gave me this word, I remember talking and one of the, one of the ministers would tell me, they would say, uh, are you sure you're ready for this? Because I was, they were telling me I was a young man, but they were telling me I was stepping on a lot of toes. You know, and I found out that the gatekeepers were a type of prophetic intercessors. Uh, you know, um, I, I had to find, I had to find out how how to properly study and how to bring the prophetic intercessor and that whole thing together because you know what happened was in in the process of walking before the lord and being quiet in the home because at that time i was being in my house by myself and i would play the same song over and over and over again and the blazing fire of the holy spirit would fill that room it would fill that whole house and i didn't understand but i was in god's presence I was in God's presence and God was dealing with me about that, you know, that intimate relationship and the intimate relationship that he was having with me was in the temple, which was his temple, which was my, which was the body, uh, the, the, my shell, the inner part. And, you know, and he would spread himself out. Uh huh. And then when he would spread himself out, he took control of, of what you would call the home, which was also, uh, um, the house of 
of God, the temple, because all of those things come into place. That's why I talk to you from a position of being in space called God and having God experience. We understand that the two tabernacles, I'm not going to go deep into it tonight, but you know you got the tabernacle of Moses and the tabernacle of David. Now we realize that the tabernacle of Moses, you know, there was no presence really in there. And at times the, 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 there was really no presence in the, in the, uh, in the tabernacle of David. You know, and, and, and so, you know, it, the, the temple is, is being rebuilt now. So now we as brothers and sisters and we as, as gatekeepers and prophetic intercessors and watchmen, listen, you know, I mean, we have to focus more on what? On, uh, on, uh, on, on what is happening. We have to focus on the joy and everything of Yeshua. See, the, the, the state of the temple, the state of those places that you go to on Sunday and some of you go on Saturday. Let me tell you something. You gotta let, look, Ye Yeshua has to handle that. Oh, Shabbat. That's Yeshua's business. His judgment will come in there and handle that. Your position is the things outside of there. It's outside of there. You got to be the gatekeepers over those young men, those young women, those older men, older women. That be the church. See, there's a church within a church. It's just like I was saying earlier, there was a person I really believe I was praying for. It almost sounds like I'm babbling, but I was praying for this individual. I wanted to see God's manifestation. I mean, I really wanted to see it. And even as I was praying tonight, the Lord said, that's just, that was just a start. But I want you to pray for this person, Ushaba. See, because if I had not have met uh, this person, I would have never been able to reach the real person down the end that Yehovah wants to get. You understand what I'm saying? And so I understand the chain, O Shabbat. I understand the blessing because some people don't know how to receive God. Some people don't know how to receive God's blessing. huh? Some people don't know how to receive God's miracle, O Shabbat. And they don't even, and listen, and they're not even willing to be taught. But you leave them alone, uh-huh, and let some, until they get grown and let somebody else deal with them another day, but God has a time as a watchman Oshaba, and as a prophetic intercessor, we're pleased when we see God manifestation and the display of what? Of his word, Oshaba, his now word, and so we have to we have to focus on the full joy the full joy, the intimate touch of Yehovah and Yeshua. That's what our assignment is today. We can no longer worry about uh, um, this present church with the men married to men, the women married to women, and and all this stuff, and the praise and worship people, and and the pastors and the bishop, all the stuff that is going on in church. Let me tell you something. We must keep our foot. We can't get discouraged. No, we must let Yeshua take care of the church which has lost his presence so that we do not neglect his restoration and building of what the end time church. Uh huh. There's some end time young people and there's some older people. There's some people that are coming out of prison and they have been quiet, oh Shabbat. And they're part of this restoration of this end time church. Will you help me, Holy Ghost, oh Shabbat. And so these are the ones that we're going after now. This is my focus, oh Shabbat. See, God say, son, I want you to get on here and get a microphone and I want you to speak to them. I want you to speak to them now. I want you to speak to right where they are. I want you to be real with them, oh Shabbat. And that's what you're doing. I'm, look, I'm not telling you to go there and, 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 and raise an offering. I'm not telling you to go there and, and, and go get a car and a house because believe me, son, if you do what I'm telling you to do, I'll make sure you have all that and more than enough. Oh, Shabbat. I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. I will rebuke the devourers for your namesake. I will cause you to be blessed going and coming. I will move through you. Yes, I will. For you are my son and I am your father. And because you allow me to house myself in you, I'm going to pour even more of me, Oh, Shabbat, that you can give to the others. Oh, Shabbat. Look and you can see 
see what she's doing from a far distance. I know, and you know, when you see something wrong, call them up and tell them it's time to bring order. There is a shift. Yehovah has called this shift of focus the time of transition. This is the end time shift of focus for the end time transition. I tell you, and you know, it's this time allows you, in most cases, you don't have to speak as much. You can just be quiet. 